This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm at the headquarters of Frank Warren. It's been quite a while since I've seen you, Frank. How was Portugal? It was nice. I had a nice break down there. It was, it was needed after all the activity for uh, Tyson's fight at Wembley and, uh, and all the stuff surrounding it. So, yeah, it was a nice little break. And now we're back in the swing. We've got some really good, good shows lined up um, and uh, looking forward to getting them up and running and uh, getting back in the swing again. Yeah, absolutely. I bet you needed a break after that uh, fight with Fury and White and all the hassle before it. But eventually uh, it went to plan. 94,000 people uh, in attendance and obviously a human man delivered with a spectacular knockout. Oh, he was fantastic, wasn't he? I mean, he, he, it was a, you know, uh, a, a textbook um, textbook boxing from Tyson. I mean, he, he was just phenomenal and he's, he just shows that he's the most dominant heavyweight in the world at the moment and probably has been for the last last 10 years. What did you make of the WBC saying they're going to give him more time uh, before they make a decision whether he has to relinquish that belt or not? Well, it, it's not about giving him more time. That's how it is. I mean, the mandatory is not due yet. And until the next mandatory is due, which I think is quite a while, a while away, um, it's up to him whether he chooses to... Uh, to fight on or not. I'm not going to try and influence him. And for that matter, and the WBC has said, you know, Mauricio Suleiman has said himself, he won't try and influence him. You know, Tyson wants to fight on. He'll make that decision in, in his own good time. If he doesn't, he doesn't. He's going out on a high. But um, we'll just see. And for me, it's not about pushing. It's when he, when he, if he wants to fight, he'll fight when he's ready. If he doesn't want to fight, then, you know, we've seen the last of a great fighter, but I'm, I'm, I, I just feel that he's got, still got a lot to give. What I wouldn't want him to do is to retire now and come back in a couple of years, because I think he's just coming to his peak now, and I think in taking time out, he, he will lose that, and he'll lose that, you know, the, the best part of his career. And uh, hopefully, for boxing, I hope he carries on, but if he doesn't, that so be it. Well, you both have uh, had had well-deserved breaks. You've been in Portugal, as I said. He's been in the south of France. Did you have much conversation with him whilst you were away? No, no I left him. He's on holiday. I've, I've only spoken to him a few times. I don't drive him mad. You know, he's, this is, he's downtime with his family. In fact, I spoke with him this morning, and uh, I think we're meeting up next week. We're going to meet up for some uh, from lunch or dinner next week and uh, have a catch-up. OK, sounds good. Uh, Frank, yeah, uh, a lot's happened um, since I last spoke to you. Got to ask you about... Your man's win on Channel 5 on the Wasserman Show. Denzel Bentley yeah. um, becoming two-time British champion. What did you make of his win against Linus Adolfia? It was a good fight and it was a brilliant fight. He'd done really well. And Denzel's a real, you know, he's a real proper boxing man. He spends his time in the gym. He's in there all the time. And I'm delighted for him and for his family. And I'm delighted for Martin and Tony Bowers. They do a brilliant job. Martin does a great job with him. And uh, it, it, it was fantastic for him. And I'm so, I'm, I can't tell you how happy I am for him. And uh, obviously we'll be working on his next fight soon. We're going to sit down and work that out and get him out in the next few months. Could it possibly a European title shot next for Denzel? If we can do it, we'll do it. You know, he, he deserves it. He's, he's he, As I say, he worked very hard. He deserved it and that's a great performance. And uh, I'll, if I can make it happen, I'll make it happen. But he'll certainly be involved in a decent fight. On a slightly less positive note, we saw Brad Foster uh, lose on the weekend, a second loss in a row. So what was your reaction to that in a... Good fight with Baluta, but yeah, your man didn't come out on top. No, he didn't. I know he had an injury in that, but he didn't. And uh, I want to have a sit down and have a chat with him and his dad, who's his trainer, and, uh, and let's see where we go moving forward. But, you know, it was, a, it, it was a decent fight. But, you know, for me, it's a fight, and I'm not being disrespectful, it's a fight he should have won. Back to more positive things. Uh, last night, Hamza Shiraz uh, won an award at the Boxing Writers Award, uh, the best young fighter of the year. So, yeah, your reaction to Hamza winning that award? I think he deserves it. You know, he's, he, he's, a, he's a brilliant talent. He's a really good talent. And uh, I'm looking forward for him, looking forward to him fighting. He's fighting at the Copper Box. Uh, and we uh, hopefully will be announcing his um, opponent. I think we're talking at the moment about him fighting um, Fink. Far, far, I've got to pronounce his name. Vincent. Vincent Furs Butch, is it? Actually, he's ranked number 10 anyway in the, in the box box uh, box wreck. So we've got a choice of him at the moment, or we might look at, uh, or, or um, uh, there's another guy that we'd be looking at, Torres. So he'll be involved in, in a really good fight. It'll be one of those fights. I'm hoping it's going to be a German because he's got a good ranking and he's, uh, you know, he'll give him a real, you know, we'll see what he's got. 
Frank, it's clear to see how talented uh, Hamza Shiraz is and had a really good win against Jess Smith last time out. There were some people online who were quite surprised, though, that Hamza had won that award, considering the Bradley Skeet fight as well. So what's your response towards that? I, 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 you know, I've said what I've, I can't say anymore. I've said about Bradley Skeet fight. He won the fight. Bradley was in trouble and he went down. And, he, and we know he let his shots go after he was after he touched down. And, uh, the re and we're going to keep turning over, going over and over the same thing. We all see what happened. And the referee made his decision. And that was the decision. We offered Brad, Brad, uh, uh, Bradley a, uh, a rematch. He said it was too soon coming off the, the stoppage. And we offered to extend it. And in the end, he retired. Can't do no more than that. In the meantime... You look at his performances, he's boxed really well and he's, and he's come through. And uh, look, we don't vote for it, it's the boxing writers. I'm delighted the boxing writers voted for him, but that's something that's that, what they, who they vote for, and they independently vote for it. So, you know, that's their opinion, and I, and I wholeheartedly agree with it. I think he's, the, you know, he's one of the best young fighters in the world, and certainly in this country at the moment. Just to go back to Tyson, actually, I forgot a couple of things to ask. Um, I know I've asked you this before, but any more indication from BT Sport about the buyers on box office? No, we haven't got them yet, but it's done it. everybody's happy. Everybody's very, very happy. We should get the final result. It take, it's, it, we get reports on BT. It's a little bit different than it was on Sky. It's uh, 60 and 90 days is when we get our sort of numbers in. But we're, we're, I can tell you, everybody is extremely happy. Okay. You did make some comments about Fury White bringing in more revenue than Joshua Klitschko. So was that just based on the gate? Um, Absolutely on the gate. Yeah, yeah got, I think it, I'm not quite sure the number. It was, it was near, nearly double what they grossed on their gate. There have been a, a lot of shows uh, with other promotional companies as well. So I will ask you, um, of course, a major one was uh, Canelo's loss to Dimitri Bivol. We haven't spoke since then. What did you make of, uh, at the time, the pound for pound king losing? I always feel a good big one will always be a good little one. And he's a natural fighter. He boxed well. Uh, and he won the fight. I mean, he won it. There's no doubt about it. Everybody knows that. I mean, Canelo, Canelo more than anybody. I think what the shame about it is he got by, beaten by a fighter in Bivol who, in the States, nobody knew who he was. You know, they, I mean, they weren't knocking down the doors for tickets or anything for that fight. I mean, I think you was out there as well. And, you know, reports were it didn't do as well as expected from that. But it, that is because Bivol was not a big name. So he's, that sort of, that invincibility of Canelo's now gone, beaten by a fighter who was, you know, who was basically an unknown in America. But great for Bivol, he's it's fantastic. And Canelo will now fight. There won't be no rematch. He's going to fight Golovkin. That's what will happen next. And the week before that, we saw Taylor Serrano at the Garden, which uh, brought in 1.5 million viewers globally. So, yeah, your reaction to that as well? Well, it's great. I mean, you know, it's, it, it was good for women's boxing. There's no doubt about that. And I'm not going to, you know, uh, it, it, it was what it was. It was a, it was a, it was an excellent fight. I, I, I'm not going to be, but you're asking me some of the comments made about it of being fight of the century. I think is a little bit extreme to say the least. There was great, great fight. You know, really competitive fight. Had to be a big fight because you look at the punch stats. I think they only threw about three jabs bef between them. So that means they're standing toe to toe. Was it 10 two-minute rounds? So, it was, uh, you know, it was all action for that. But, you know, great for women's boxing. Fantastic for women's boxing. There was some frustration from people at Matrim and the Zone that Sky, in their opinion, didn't adequately cover the fights between Taylor Serrano and Canelo. But what are your thoughts on that, Frank? It's crybaby stuff, isn't it? You know, it's only come from, only come from uh, the other side. I mean... Now they know what it's like when you haven't got that, that little publicity machine banging the drum for you. You've got to get out and do it yourself now. You've got to get for your arse and it's called promotion. You know, it's a welcome to the new world. If you'd done a few shows in the early days at York Hall, we're at TV, off TV and working hard, then you find out what promoting is all about. And then you haven't got to give tickets away or reduce the prices. Now this week gone, we just saw uh, Boatsy Richards we were looking forward to seeing uh, Demetrius Andrade and Zach Parker as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't get that. So what is the current situation with Zach Parker? Well, Zach, obviously, is number one. And uh, we, we still not received the medical, by the way, yet from, um, from uh, Demetrius. So we'll see what happens. We have a contract is a, and uh, we're just await, await what he says. You know, the WBO have put out a... Uh, 
put something out about it, but we you know we're we're waiting. That we we obviously object to that because it's a great fight for Zach and it's a great fight for the fans, and hopefully we can we'll get something resolved fairly soon. But Zach's the number one, and that's it. Frank, it's been quite a while. Do you not think it's slightly strange that Demetrius hasn't sent in any scans of his injury? Well, he certainly hasn't to us. I don't know if he sent them into the WBO. No one's forwarded them to us if he has. But it's it, it's just it's it's a shame. I mean, we we knocked over we we sort of sold. I think it was over twenty thousand tickets, and we had a couple of weeks to go. So I think we'd have done extremely well there. You know, we we, we set it up to if we'd have took twenty, if we'd have got twenty thousand people, we'd have been delighted. You know, considering that Zach's. You know, it's a big step up, step up for Zach in, uh, in in this part stage of his career. But I think we'd have had, you know, 25, maybe we've got 30,000 in there because the people at Derby got well behind that fight. Um, it's, now we've got to, you know, get, get Zach back on track. If he's going to be out that long, then we've got to see what we're going to do with Zach. And uh, as, as you said, I was been away. So I'm going, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a meeting and make some decisions. OK. As I said, we did see uh, Joshua Boatsy v Craig Richards. What was your thoughts on uh, Boatsy's win? Yeah, he, he, he did what he had to do. I mean, it was for him, it was a uh, it was a tough fight. Craig did well, um, and he certainly came on in the later st latter stages of the fight. It was a it was a it was a it was a, it was a decent fight to watch. Yeah, can't complain about that. It's a good fight to watch. Throughout fight week, um, a lot of the media. We're asking about Anthony Yard. Uh, Joshua Boatsy and Eddie Hearn spoke quite often about Anthony Yard. So they were quite adamant that, well, I don't think they said Yard ducked Boatsy, but they said we put on a million pounds for him and he still didn't want to take the fight. He's going to get less for fighting in a world title fight against Better Beev or Smith Jr. So what was your response to that and the current situation with Anthony Yard? Look, we made it very clear from the beginning as far as... Um, Anthony's concerned. We got him in. He got himself by winning by winning that fight, uh, the rematch that he had. He got he got himself into the number one mandatory position. He's in that position. He's flying out to the uh, Joe Smith uh, Burbis head fight. He's be out there for that, and the winner will fight him in October. Now, I keep banging on about what 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 he's going to get. He ain't going to get short money. That's for sure. He's definitely not going to get short money. And that fight, hopefully, will be in the UK. And if he wins that, and I think he's got a great chance of winning that fight, especially in the UK if we can get it here, then uh, he's in the driving seat. So why would he want to give that up? And why would we? You know, we made it very clear. He, he'll fight, but I, I fancy him against Boatsy big time, especially after watching that fight the weekend. I fancy him even more now. And I don't quite want to keep banging on about it. Wasn't that a WBA eliminator for the title? Yes, for Dimitri Bivol's title, correct. So what? So just get if you're getting into the eliminator to fight Bivol, what's he keep talking about Yard for? Fight Bivol. That's what he. That's what he signed up for, wasn't it? That's what the contract says. So why are they ducking that? My man's not ducking it. He's going to go. He's got the opportunity to fight for three belts. It's a unified title. Why would it? Why would we even consider anything else than that? You know, it's common sense. So we're looking at potentially October for Yard yeah. v, the, v the winner of Better Be Evan Smith in the UK? That's what we're looking to do. We've been talking the top rank and that's where we'd like to get to with it. Okay. We look forward to that fight between Better Be Evan Smith Jr. I'm sure Anthony uh, will be watching eagerly at ringside. So Frank, yeah, we were eagerly awaiting an announcement for Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker. <coughs> uh, it's been dragging on for quite a while. So what is the current situation with that, please? Well, it, is, it has been dragging on. I mean, after we all, we have, uh, asked, we were getting it, we got it done and it was all good to go for July. Uh, there was a problem and that is that uh, Joe can't fight. Joe Parker can't fight because um, his trainer, Andy Lee's wife's having a baby or a baby's due apparently in a week at a fight. So he can't train. So we've had to push it back now till September. But in the meantime, Joe's going to be out. So we're looking at a couple of opponents for him or three opponents. We're looking at, and uh, hopefully we'll have that nailed down in the next 24, 48 hours and announce that for the 2nd of July. And then we're still waiting for that fight between the two Joes later on in the year? Yeah, well, he's got to win. Providing, <laughs> providing our man wins, then uh, we're on. We'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's not our fault. It's beyond. I mean, we wanted the fight. I don't want to be. You know, Joe wanted the fight, and uh, unfortunately, it's, you know, it's, it's Joe Parker who's not available. Dubois Bryant is on. Um, Don King is putting that on. Uh, not long to go, June 11th in Miami. So, uh, 
yeah, expect uh, your man Dubois to ice uh, Trevor Bryant confident? Uh, look, I'm, I've got a lot of confidence in, uh, in Daniel. Having said that, you know, he's not coming to roll over Bryant and he's in his, you know, he's in his own country. So it's going to be, you know, I, I think Daniel's a, a real top quality operator, but apparently Bryant fancies his job big time. Yeah, he's been quite uh, loud on social media yeah, about Daniel Dubois. Saying, so, which is good because obviously uh, Daniel's not, not the sort of guy who mouths off and everything. So he's been you know, doing it and obviously you've got to sell the fight. So I'm really looking forward to it. And you know, Daniel does come through, as I hope he will, then we'll be in a, you know, he'll be in a fantastic position moving forward when this heavyweight scene settles down at the end of the year. Did you happen to see the poster that Don King put out for the fight? Yeah. Thoughts on the poster? It was a nice poster. <laughs> I take it uh, you'll be flying out on fight week, Frank, for that one? Yeah, we're all going out, yeah. We'll be out that flight, yeah. All right. Just the uh, last one to finish off on. We've uh, seen both Amir Khan and Kel Brook call it a day. Two fighters, of course, that you worked with. Um, yeah, your thoughts on Amir and Kel both retiring? Yeah, I think that, you know, they've both been great servants to the sport. They've both done extremely well for British boxing and world boxing and... Uh, they des- you know, hope they have a well-deserved retirement. You know, uh, I think Kel is a very sensible guy in doing what he's done. You know, he's come back and they, I mean, they both earned, earned themselves a nice few quid for the last fight, and good luck to him on it. And I think, and it was definitely was time for Amir to to hang up the gloves. You know, he he he'd, uh, he had no more to give. Just one last question that's popped into my head uh, whilst we're talking about Canelo Bivol. Um, Eddie Hearn has gone publicly and said it's done. Well over six hundred thousand buys on this own pay-per-view. Of course, that was their first American pay-per-view. So, yeah, your thoughts on that number? Well, I don't know about. I'm not sure about those numbers. If they, if that's what he's saying, they've done. Then who knows? I mean, only, only they, they know the truth of that. Um, that's not what I've been hearing, but that's irrelevant anyway. You know, that's a lot of buys for fight zone. That's for sure. On what? On fight zone, it's a load of buys, isn't it? No, on this own pay-per-view. Oh, so what's what, the app, we, we have, they're apps, aren't they? On one of the apps, anyway. OK, Frank Warren, thank you very much uh, for your time. I said it's been an uh, overdue catch-up. Is there anything you'd like to add uh, to the fans before we close off? Yeah, we've got some good fights somewhere. Fighters are going to get some great exposure. And this new era is dawning with uh, the tie between BT and Discovery. That is going to be great news for the fans and certainly great news for us because it's going to put us in a position where we can expand on what we're doing and give fighters valuable exposure and they can earn some more you know, decent money as a result of it. OK, thank you very much for your time and hopefully speak on the channel again soon. Look forward to it. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Day. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.